Next we're going to show you a whole bunch of different EtherCAT uh, plugins. Uh, we're going to show you DNS spoofing um, and we're also going to show you two different uh, denial of service attacks and we're going to show you a couple of plugins that you can use to try to find uh, sniffers on your local network. All right, the first plugin we're going to show you is DNS spoofing. To get to the plugins, you go to the plugins tab and then go to manage plugins. Um, Basically, a DNS server is a server when you type in a URL for a website, you will send this URL to the DNS server and it will reply with the IP address to that website. Basically, what EtherCAP does with this plugin will intercept that request and then reply with a fake IP address. Basically, what this means is when you go to like infinitysys.com and you have a, a DNS spoofing running, it will send back an IP address of a different web server and then that web server's data will be sent to the browser instead of this data, which you'll see in a few minutes here. All right, before you can run this plugin, you need to configure the ether.dns. Basically, it tells EtherCAP which uh, DNS requests to spoof. There's a few different types of intercepts you can configure. There's A, PDR, and MX. The one we're going to be using is, is the A request. It's, uh, you'll search for the URL and then return an IP address. As you can, hear, as you can see here, this is kind of the syntax for this. Uh, the example they use is Microsoft.com, and then they'll use an A type request, and then they'll send back the IP address for Linux.org. So basically what will happen is when you go to Microsoft, it will send you to Linux.org. Um, you can also use a wildcard. As you can see, there's a wildcard.microsoft.com, which will basically mean like if you go to www.microsoft.com or like mail.microsoft.com or automatic updates.microsoft.com, it'll, it'll intercept all those requests and send it back with the Linux.com IP address. Also, you can just use one asterisk, which will mean every single URL that is sent to the DNS server, it will send back this IP address. So every single website will be redirected to Linux.org. But for this example, we're not going to do that. We're going to just we're just going to search for infinitysys.com requests, and we're going to send back the IP address of this machine. We're going to send back the IP address of the attacker machine, which is, as you can see here, 192.168.15.6. So, and then we're going to use an, a, the same one with a, an asterisk dot infinitesis. That means if they go to, if they type in www.infinitesis or mail.infinitesis or whatever, it will still intercept that. And then we're going to, going to run an Apache server. You can do this by going to services, httpd, and then start httpd. And as you can see, the Apache server was started. And you can see that uh, the contents of the server are stored at user-local-apache-htdocs. And basically, we're going to browse to that folder and we're going to create a, an index.html. We can put whatever you want in this index file. Um, you can, I, I would imagine that most people would do like a fake website to be able to fish passwords, or you can do whatever you want. But I'm just going to do a simple pretend like it thinks this was hacked. Uh, I'm just going to test it out to make sure it's working properly. I'm just going to go to the, the local host, which is 192. Dot, Zero, or 127.0.0.1 and as you can see it is working properly. Alright, so everything's set up properly in the DNS config. We're just going to save it and we're going to open up EtherCAT. We are going to do a basic man in the middle attack. You could do any one of the three that we showed you. Uh, they would all work. And we're just going to do our poisoning once again, just because it's the simplest one. It's used the most often. Um, we're going to start sniffing. And, and we're going to enable the DNS 
spoofing plugin. As you can see here, um, it was activated, and it's, you can tell that it's activated in the plugin menu by an asterisk. All right, we're back on the victim computer, and as you can see, we'll open up uh, Infinitus.com here, and it seems to the victim that Infinitus was hacked. It sends back this information to it. Um, like I said before, you could put in any IP address you want. You can make it. You can make it go to a different website. Um, you could uh, run a server like I'm doing here, and you can put in content you want on it. One thing that will happen, as you see, if I go to any subdirectories, it will um, pop up a not found because on my server that I'm running off this attack computer, it does not have a, a videos directory or a forms directory. So it's going to obviously going to res respond with the error that it's not found. And if you go back to Ethercap here, you can see that it, it displays a message when it spoofs a, a DNS response. All right, I'm just going to disable that here, and we'll show you a couple more. All right, for the next plugin, we're going to show you the isolate plugin. The isolate plugin will isolate a host from the LAN. Uh, it does this by poisoning the ARP cache with that host's uh, own MAC address. So anytime it tries to send out, it's connecting basically to itself. How this plugin works is um, under the target list, if you in target one is going to be the victim computer. And you can choose to leave uh, the target two field blank. If it's blank, it'll do all requests send out, so it will uh, deny service to for anything from that host. But you also, in target two, you can put in specific uh, hosts that, it, like for requests to go to a certain host, it'll deny service just for that particular uh, connection. Now, as you see, when we've uh, under plugins, after we've act, uh, activated the isolate plugin, uh, you can see that that the victim has been added to the list, to the host list. And if we switch over to the victim computer, we can see that it doesn't allow us to connect to uh, the internet. It won't allow us to do anything. It's sending that request, looping it back to the local computer. And just to clarify, you don't need to be running a man-in-the-middle attack for this to work. I guess we just had EtherCap crash there on us. Um, EtherCap shouldn't crash on you. Um, we had some problems during the installation, but that plugin should work just fine for you. Alright, we're going to restart up EtherCap here.